in the podcast. All right, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Omnius Podcast. This is episode 50. Uh, what was it? 50, 75. Don't know why I said 50, 75. Um, we've got a good amount of people watching us on the streaming of Instagram. I, I need to figure out how to stream on YouTube so I can start having people on YouTube and stuff like that and uh, really get that going and stuff, you know, and build up even more and, you know, start collabing with people and stuff like that. But that's what I've been doing for for quite some time. But we're going to get right into it, right? You know, I don't want to waste any more of your time. But shout out to everybody who's been watching. Shout out to all the people watching me here. You know, when I upload this on YouTube and people who listen to me on Spotify and stuff like that. We're going to be talking about two specific topics today. One dealing with the Target incident. And, like, there were a lot of black women and a lot of uh, mothers that were in a rampant because of clothing that target was putting out and stuff like that we're just gonna talk about that shortly and then we're gonna get into right into janelle monet because i saw a lot of negroes negroing all right shucking and jiving on social media under my comment section and in my dms um as if like they were a part of a baptist church community okay um ridiculous <laughs> But, um, you know, what? let me let me get into the, the comment section before we get right into this, because somebody asked me a question. Uh, what's good? What's good? You got frogs and crickets speaking uh, when you're in the country that 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 evidently that's what be happening. <laughs> um, are you found of Rashad Jamal, Billy Carson, um, Bobby Hemmett, et cetera, those type of guys? Um, I'm aware of all of those names. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to try and speak bad o- on Rashad. Um, I just found out about Billy Carson. I don't know too much about him, so I don't know if he's a like valid teacher or whatever. Like I see him from time to time. Um, I didn't watch um, 19 Keys, excuse me, his podcast yet, but he was on 19 Keys. Um, I think it was Earn Your Leisure. I think that's what it's called. Um, he was on 19 keys podcast. Um, I've watched, I probably watched like five, 10 minutes of it only because I was rushing out, um, to go to the gym, um, the other day, but I know Billy Carson, definitely know Bobby Hemmett, not really, a, not really a fan of Rashad Jamal, but you know, for those who know, y'all know, <laughs> but I'm not really a fan of Rashad Jamal. Uh, why people always asking about Rashad Jamal and Billy Carson, it be beyond me. Be <laughs> I I I don't know. Uh they didn't put Rashad Jamal in the same sentence as Bobby. They did though. That's the crazy part. Oh uh, I believe it's cause they don't have a mind of their own. You know what, let's talk about it though. Because I was gonna actually I was gonna deal with this when talking about Janelle Monet, right? Because um I don't specifically know about billy carson so i'm not gonna speak on billy carson or rashad jamal but there are certain like spiritual people like when you listen to them they have a shirt uh they have a certain posture or like uh like i don't know how to explain it like they have a certain uh character about them where like they speak a certain way that grasp onto the masses if that makes sense. Um, not to say they don't really get into the depths of it. But Bobby him can never reach the masses. If you get my drift. Right. You can hear Bobby Hemmett. But a lot of people can't understand him. And grasp what he is saying. Um, some people like when they get into like the occult stuff. And they want to get into the spiritual stuff. They turn it back into the same religion that they left in the first place. Um, and that's where they mess up. Right. So like when they come across my platform and they see all this uh, mundane stuff and they see the uh, the holy harlots and, and the Devi energy and all this promiscuous stuff, they think I'm off. They think I'm off the chain. They think I'm I'm doing all this type of like unproductive, dysfunctional stuff. But I'm just showing you your shadow. <laughs> 
I'm just showing you the dark side, the other side that all these other spiritual teachers aren't showing you. That's what it is. That's the left hand path. That's the sinister path. Fun fact, I'm left handed, you know, so shout out to the left hands. Uh, I know there's not many of us, but shout out to shout out to the people who are left handed. <laughs> but that's what I do on my platform. Um, of course, I'm Omnius, so I deal with like different settings and different content and platforms or different ways of uh, expressing my platform. But, you know, whenever you s see me posting like the satanic, sinister stuff, uh, girls, booty shaking, <laughs> promiscuous stuff, sexual stuff, a lot of chaos. Right. Um, I love to display like a lot of sinister stuff because a lot of people don't see that type of content or exposure of spirituality um concerning like the occult and metaphysical stuff um so that's what i like to do on my platform so you might come across i'm not gonna put any put out any names but you might follow some people out there who are talking about alignment and crystals and meditation and affirmations you know and you come on my platform and i'm telling you about you know creating your own entity becoming your own entity using the devil as an entity to, to you know to utilize your darkness to utilize the eternal flame within yourself and, and all that type of stuff they don't like that uh, somebody said um dark psychology 101 this is what most of these spiritual teachers are using to trick uh trick uh most of these new agers really I'm going to look into that dark psychology 101. Um, I do know that, you know, the way that people are articulate, there's a certain way that people can talk to where they can grasp a big mass of people. Right. So they're like a uh, nature boy was somebody who was very articulate, you know, so he was able to grasp a certain amount of people to whatever he was doing. Right. Um, I don't want to put Rashad Jamal in the same category. <laughs> I'm not personally, I can't grasp to Rashad Jamal um, personally. I have seen some of his live streams and some of his stuff, but like I can't grasp on to him because there was always something off with me personally. I can't speak for nobody else. Um, but whenever I saw, for some reason, I always connected Rashad and Nature Boy, not saying they're the same person or that they have like similarities. Of course not, knowing Nature Boy. <laughs> But, you know, when I would see uh, Rashad Jamal, you know, with the crystals around and he ain't got no shirt on. He over here with the hand gestures and stuff like that. That's the same thing Nature Boy would do. And so I, I put two and two together. But, you know, Nature Boy went one on one or he was going back and forth with Young Pharaoh and Rashad Jamal went back and forth with Young Pharaoh. You know, so like I was just like, Lord, have mercy. I don't. That's just me, you know, um, all that, like the beef, the, the, the spiritual beefs and stuff like that. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand it personally, how people can get into that type of stuff. Um, it's beyond me. I'm glad, you know, people like Dr. Umar learn from those type of situations and don't really, from as far as I know, if he don't involve himself in those type of things, like when he got into it with, uh, Sara suit and said he, you know, he's talking, he big papa, you know, and he was trying to get into it with Boyce Watkins. You know, I've had my fair share when I was in the conscious community of trying to go back and forth with Negroes. And ever since I got into the occult, I've, I've let that go. I just is, is useless. Like I can have conversations. I can have discussions but that beefing, like, come see me. He ain't about nothing. I'm the one that be doing the real knowledge. And I'm the one that really be doing stuff. What you doing, nigga? I said, okay. <laughs> gotcha. You haven't done your shadow work. <laughs> you got a lot more work to do. Because even even with all the knowledge that they know, you know, the way that you complete your enlightenment is that you have uh, what they call it, knowledge, wisdom and understanding. And some people can have a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding 
and no wisdom. And that's when people get egotistical. That's when people get narcissistic. That's when people want to be in the spotlight and don't want nobody else to shine other than them. Right. Some people can have wisdom. Some people can have understanding and no knowledge. Like they have the capability to understand. They don't do no research. (laughs) They have the potential to become great. But, you know, because they're not wise, they always following the leader. They always following a trend. They always following this, that and the third. Some people can have wisdom and knowledge and no understanding. And that's when people start regurgitating stuff. And you can hear somebody. You can hear when somebody's regurgitating somebody else. You know, it's kind of like when you listen to like, and and no offense to the Nation of Islam people, but when you listen to the Nation of Islam speakers, there's a certain way that they talk. Um, Lord, get my mic in check. <laughs> there's a certain way that the Nation of Islam speakers talk. Um, and, and not like people like Rizza Islam. When you listen to Rizza Islam, it's authentic. Okay. When you listen to people like uh, 19 Keys, it's authentic. Um, but some of those... Some of those Nation of Islam speakers, you can hear Farrakhan in them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if y'all understand what I'm talking about. Like, but there's, there's a certain way that Farrakhan talks. And then you hear people in the Nation of Islam talk the same way Farrakhan does. Right? So it's, 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 it's things like that. Miss Acrobat, what's good? Uh, Brother Ben X. You know what? I actually like Brother Ben X. Um... I like his content whenever I come across it. Uh, I know people have like mixed feelings about Brother Ben X. But you know what? His content's pretty good. Um, I don't think he... I don't think he... Uh, regurgitates information. But... I think he's pretty good. Um, as far as I know of. I, I remember back in the time when they tried to do the Paradigm Movement with Derek in... I don't know what happened to that movement. Whatever happened to that movement? (laughs) I never knew what happened to that movement. Because there there was supposed to be like a paradigm shift they was coming out with and stuff like that. Um, And then it just, it, it, it just poofed. Um, I don't know if it didn't work out. I don't know if like, because people were claiming that they were scamming people. Because I do... Um, that's why at first I saw 19 keys a certain type of way at first, uh, because there were people in the conscious community that was trying to claim that RZA and Brother Ben X and, and other people part of this paradigm movement, uh, were scamming people out of their money and stuff like that. And they was going to the Virgin Islands and all. So at first I saw 19 keys a certain type of way. Um, but it, it cleared up a little bit. Um, Again, I mean, I don't know 19 Keys like that all the way. Um, I do like his content. I like, you know, who he is as a as a public figure or a speaker and stuff. I don't know him individually. Um, but I do remember that. So, I don't know. Yeah, you remember that, uh, Villains Grimm? Yeah, you remember that too. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know whatever happened to that. Um, I feel like we all were good. Okay, uh, Brother... What's his name? Brotherhood Healing. He says, I feel like we all regurgitate information but at least um add your own perspective or spin to it well i wouldn't call it regurgitating i would because like for me i see it as you either regurgitate or you recite right so like if you recite information you can add your own spin to it you know what i'm saying that's how I see it. Maybe I'm just playing semantics right now. <laughs> but if you recite information, you know, you can add your own spin to it, you know, add your own flav, you know, because you're reciting information. Um, if you're regurgitating, you know, you're just saying word for word without really applying your understanding to it, if that makes sense. But yeah, definitely add your own perspective and your own spin to it. You know, one thing about me, when you come to my platform, you're going to know it's my platform. <laughs> you're not going to come to my platform and compare me to anybody else other than the Omnius Rome. So you're not going to say like, oh, he's just like a, a brother panic. 
I am my own individual. I might have I may have information or things that I talk about that might be similar to what you may have heard from a Bobby Hemet or a Brother Panic um, or C. Freeman L. or, you know, the other spiritual people out there. But when you come across my content, you're going to know. Oh, that's that satanic nigga. <laughs> that's that satanic nigga. I don't know. I don't, I don't listen to that nigga. That nigga over there, he be tripping. But, you know, I do my best to be as authentic and, you know, original as possible. I'm very creative. So I do my best to um, put in my creativity in my content. You know, my memes, the reels, um, the shorts, the con the, the YouTube videos and stuff like that. So when you come across my content, you're going to be knowing. You're going to be teaching you about creating entities and... and the holy harlots. I don't know if y'all if y'all can see that, but you know, like you're gonna you're gonna know some stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about the holy whore and and uh, you know the spiritual secret uh, sacredness of like whoring and promiscuity and all that type of stuff, right? And dealing with the archetypes, not dealing with the occupation of being a hoe. But the archetype of the sacred hole. You know. Things of that nature. Right. They love comparing niggas. That's what small minds do. Let me wave at some of the people who done came up in here. What's good everybody? So we we doing. We recording a podcast episode. Uh, right now I'm just chilling with the. <laughs> the audience. Uh, just. Uh, reading comments and stuff. But let's let's get into the topic. Right. Because we 17 minutes. Damn. We 17 minutes into the podcast. Um, yeah, let's deal with the. So the first topic dealing with like the Target shop. Basically, what was going on here was there's been some videos that have been going out with like a lot of these mothers going into um, a certain section in Target. Now, mind you, if you go out and you shop and do stuff like that, you're going to see um, anytime there's going to be like a certain holiday or there's going to be a certain day or celebration that's going to go around. Um, the stores are going to be doing their best to capitalize on it, right? For an example, back in 2020, when the whole Black Lives Matter thing was going rampant and George Floyd was damn near on the status of Michael Jackson. Why? I don't know. Personally, no disrespect to George Floyd. Maybe. But <laughs> I don't know what this man did to be a nationwide figure for this movement. I I I, I don't trust. I didn't trust it one bit. Um, and not not because he was an adult star, but um, I didn't trust it. There was no type of like if you learn if you really go back to the George Floyd Black Lives Matter movement back in twenty twenty. There was no productivity out of that. Like we didn't get no money out of it. We didn't get no progression out of it. We didn't we didn't get anything out of that that movement other than a good dance and a cha cha slide and the cupid shuffle and a maybe maybe a couple of hugs here and there. Maybe maybe getting pepper sprayed, tap dancing on a couple of police cars, crunking. But nothing productive came out of people uh uh looting Nike stores and and looting places and and getting free stuff, going to jail for stupid stuff like there was no productivity out of this outrage. Anyways, but you know how, you know how the government does. You know how the elites, the higher ups, they are definitely going to capitalize on the sheep. So you know Netflix. Netflix was one of the first people I saw that. Oh, we're going to have a Black Lives Matter collection, uh, a, a black black collection, because we want to stand with all the African-Americans. I remember I went to the store one day, right? I went to the store. I went to Kroger's. I went to Kroger's and there's a long line, right? Long line of white folk. I'm standing in line. Everybody look back. Oh, you could pass me. Oh, you could pass me. Oh, that's okay. You could pass me. 
Okay. A woman asked me, uh, do you have like, you know, like one of those cars or the keychain, whatever case is. Oh, I don't have a car. About two to three white folks. Oh, you could use mine. You could use mine. Like, <laughs> why is it when one of us dies, you want to do something? Now you want to feel uh, sentimental. Now you want to go out of your way to do so. I don't need this fake sympathy like I don't, I don't need this it's it's crazy I don't, I don't need any of that but anyways netflix hulu even pornhub even the hub was out here being sentimental to black people we're going to have a full collection of ebony we, <laughs> that's that's how you be, that's how you sympathize with us not through money not through resources not through anything productive you you want to be you want to stand with us by giving us free ebony a free ebony collection so i could just like just just get my my knockers off black lives matter <laughs> like what what <laughs> What does that do? You know what I'm saying? Like that was when when 2020 happened. I knew right then and there, there ain't no hope. There is no hope for these niggas. I knew right then and there. But anyways, getting back on topic, what certain industries and certain companies will do? They will definitely capitalize on, you know, holidays, certain celebrations, and certain movements like LGBT. So you're going to see Target, Walmart, Kmart, whatever the case is, you're going to see stores out there who are going to execute and capitalize however they can. So you're going to go in Target and you're going to see a little girl shirt that talk about love is love. Or you're going to see a little boy shirt that's going to have some LGBT flags and stuff. Now, what the parents will say is like, oh, I, I refuse to support. Dang, all these people done popped up out of nowhere. What's good, everybody? <laughs> Hello, Aquarius. Hello, Miss Dominique. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, all these people just popped up out of the blue. Not all these people. My bad. Not, not y'all. Oh, <laughs> um, concerning. Target. Dang, I just lost my train of thought. Target. Okay, back to the mothers. The mothers were saying, what's good? What's up? Uh, I can't say your name. Fisid. I was going to say Fisid. What's good, goat? But um, the mothers coming out of nowhere, right? The, the mothers just come out of nowhere talking about, I refuse to support Target anymore. I refuse to give Target my money. Well, if you ain't going to support Target, don't support Walmart, don't support Burger King, McDonald's, KFC, because they all stand with Pride Month. Okay, what wasn't it? Was it McDonald's or Burger King that came up with like a a rainbow? Y'all remember that? Like, last, was it last year, the year before? It was Burger King, Walmart, uh, Burger King or McDonald's, they came up with like a, a rainbow burger or a sandwich or something. Anyways, I forgot, but I hate the fake outrage of black people. It makes my stomach turn. I I I think I hate it more than I hate cherry. I hate the flavor cherry. I hate cherry. But I I cannot stand the fake outrage of black people. Like black people and fake rage go together. Like Whitney Houston and crack. <laughs> like they just mix, but they shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason for black people to be so reactive to stuff that really don't concern them at all. Even when it concerns like police shootings. There are so many things that happen within our community 
at our hands and we don't care about it. And when stuff happens to another black person at the hands of another set, uh, another set of people, we be mad about it for about two days or, or not even for two days. Whenever we get on social media or whenever we watch the news and then we go on about our day. Yeah, like I don't really have an opinion on like Target and them putting out shirts for little kids. I mean, if you didn't know what the Hirox were into concerning like pride, if you haven't seen the pride parades and how they try to instill the kids to join in and stuff like that, I don't know what else to tell you. Just because you see it doesn't mean you have to entertain it. Whenever you go into a store, you're not going to like everything that you like. Just get what you have to get and keep it moving. Why are you into it? Why are you in the section? <laughs> Why are you in a in a in a section of a store that you don't like? You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna go to the brawl section and then put my phone on and talk about like look how sexual all this sexual stuff they got in Walmart and they want our women to wear this. I look like a fool. <laughs> Just get what you gotta get and keep it moving. Like there's no reason for you to be making some some fake outrage because they don't have enough masculine shirts for the for the for the boys in a Target. Why are you even getting clothes from Target? That's my qu Why are you even getting clothes from Target? Who gets clothes from Target? That's the real question. Who even gets clothes from Target? I ain't never got clothes from Target. Maybe maybe when I was younger, maybe when I was small. Really small, at best. I don't remember, I can't think of one shirt, one one time I ever got clothes from Target, and you faked outrage because they got clothes in Target. You don't even get clothes. To t Ridiculous. What's good, Tito? But anyways, let's get on to the second topic. All right, now we're gonna get into. We're gonna get a get a little controversial here okay so stay with me now when dealing with miss janelle monet all right miss janelle monet has basically reinvented herself or rather is entering into her feminine phase right she is entering into a very wild feminine like nature and she has entered into this uh product of becoming the wild woman Right. She's becoming she's tapping into her Lilith energy, her Ishtar energy, and she's coming out with an album um, in June, um, June 9th, I believe. And that's like 669. <laughs> I think she did that on purpose, um, but it's coming out in June. June is the sixth month um, and then it's coming out on the ninth. You know, I don't think she was slick with that, but. <laughs> That's also an occult number uh, for those who know. If you know, you know. But um, yeah, it's coming out on, on and it's coming out on a Friday. I'm looking at my calendar right now and Friday is Venus Day. All right. So that's a cult. That's very occultic. <laughs> you can look at it as occultic if you want to. But if it's coming out on June 9th and then June is the sixth month and you got 69 and then you also have Friday, which is Freya's day or Aphrodite's day or um, Ishtar day, you know, or dealing with the divine feminine. You know, you're we're dealing with something. We're dealing with that wild feminine energy on that specific day anyways. But when I saw, let me tell you my story, my background. Right. So I remember about a couple of weeks ago, somebody sent me a video of Janelle Monet basically advertising her music video. And she coming out with pleasure on her chest and everybody just going wild, right? Because we ain't never seen Janelle Monet's titties. <laughs> we ain't never seen Janelle Monet's titties ever. And when my homeboy, when he sent me this, I said, nigga, he said, brah. I said, damn. He said, nigga. I said, damn. 
I ain't, I ain't know she had it like that. Now, I knew Janelle Monet. I saw her in a couple of commercials here and there and stuff like that. I always knew her. She was wearing, like, suits and stuff. So, I always thought she was, like, tomboyish or masculine. But she come out the blue. She coming out the waters. With pleasure on her chest. Showing the, the, the chocolate chip. The chocolate chips. I said, bruh. I am in love. Oh, yes. I hope that you're the one. If not... You are the prototype. I think I'm in love. Like, I was on my, I was on my, uh, Andre 3000 shit when I saw that. That was wild. <laughs> Since then, I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to take time out to, to really see this through. So, you know, I was I was looking at some of her stuff and I've been like studying her and I've been looking at some of her interviews and um, she did an inter interview with somebody named Angel Ramirez. I think that's her name, Angela Ramirez. And I, I think that's her last name. If I, that's not her last name, just put in Janelle Monae's recent interviews is it's somewhere in there. But anyways, like basically she does this interview specifically with with miss angela and talks about her whole life story about how like you know her sexuality and how she you know was wearing the suits and stuff at a time but like she wasn't doing it for modesty or she wasn't doing it to try and show women can be respectable but that was just what she wanted to do at the time and now she's entering into you know this phase of now she wants to show out you know all this type of stuff and now, this has men in cahoots. This got men in an uproar. When she was wearing suits, she was too masculine. Now she out here showing her titties, and she doing too much. Y'all niggas can't be pleased with nothing. <laughs> they can't be pleased with nothing. I am a little late. I ain't even going to front. I am, I, I am a little late. I'm a little late to the party, but listen, it's better to be late than, than to not show up. Because, bruh, Janelle Monet is fine as fine can be. Fine like skin wine. Okay? That girl's fine. Did I mention she's fine? That girl fine. Lord have mercy. Let me wave at some of the people up in here. What's good? What's good? What's good? But anyways, so with Miss Janelle Monet, when I po when I first posted her last week, what happened was there was some Negroes in the comments and there was some Negroes in my DMs that were telling me that why are you posting her? She LGBT. Why are you posting her? She rainbow. Why are you posting her? She hates black men. And then that's what inspired my title because I put Janelle Monet hates black men, right? And I've never, ever heard anything from Miss Janelle Monet about black men. Ever. So I let it be because I'm like, they're probably reaching. I let it be. And so I watched one of her interviews. I posted um, her magazine cover, which had Negroes in cahoots in the comment section. I mean, you you would you would have thought like I ran into the Christian algorithm of social media, the way that these Negroes were going crazy. Like these niggas don't like titties. Just enjoy the titties and keep it moving, okay? <laughs> your favorite P star, your favorite adult star you like to watch, is just as rainbow as Janelle Monae, if not more. Just keep it moving, all right? <laughs> Putting up this fake stunt, like just putting up this fake rage. I can't believe she's showing her. She gonna hit the wall. Like some, 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 some of these Negroes. They just need to be honest with themselves, right? I'm gonna tell you a little story. When I was a Hebrew Israelite, for those who were there for that moment back in 2019, you had to be there. 
I was the number one advocate for talking against this hot girl summer. I was the number one advocate. So much so that I went viral for making a certain video edit with like one of the spiritual conscious women. And basically, I used one of Malcolm X audios about talking about what happened to our women. Our women becoming Jezebel. Our women becoming harlots. Our women becoming Charlottes. All this type of stuff, right? Because we won't stand up and be men. And that, and I went viral for that. That video was going all across the conscious community, right? Because, for one, I never heard Malcolm X talk like that. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people never heard Malcolm X use the word harlot and Charlotte and lesbian. So... I was the number one advocate. All right. I'm going to tell you up front in the media, on social media. I was the number one advocate for talking against hot girls, the harlots, the Jezebel spirits, all that stuff. Get that off my social media. I wanted to promote modest women can be beautiful too. all these women being dressed up down, got the tablecloth and everything. But when I got off social media, when I got off social media, all the women, I lied to you not, all the women in my phone were holy harlots. Hoes, hoes to the ho, 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 ho. More hoeing than Santa Claus hoeing. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk all this, I'll talk this big talk on social media. But when I get off, I'm texting the girl, you, you coming by. Send them titties my way. What you doing tonight? <laughs> I was no better than the Pharisees, to be honest. I wasn't being true to myself. It wasn't until I got into the occult. I'm living good. I'm living nice. And that's how authentic I want my content to be. You're going to see some booty shaking. I can't believe the Red Pill content community... Almost got me to think that twerking and, and booty shaking was stale. That stuff is not stale. I, I love me some booty shaking. I don't even know why they even had me believe of oh, the twerking. Is that all that you can do? Bring that ass here. Like we, <laughs> when I see a girl that she knows she can back it up and she got that waistline. It 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 never gets old to me. It never gets old. And I can't believe the red pill community almost made me think that that was stale. Because they have this notion like, oh, that's all she can do is shake her booty. But what what about her mind, brother? What about what what she knows up here? What about what is she smart enough, brother? Can she cook for you, brother? Most of these women know how to please a man. They know how to cook. They know how to talk to him nice. They know how to treat him like a king. But the issue is she a hoe. That's what it is. They know how to please a man. They know how to roll his weed up. They know how to cook for him. They know how to, to massage his feet. But the issue is she is the midnight Ho, oh, that's what she is. She out here doing God's work in the midnight hour. And men can't lay aside their ego <laughs> to be with the one woman that they really want to be with. They want to turn the, the modest woman into a freak. They want to turn the modest woman into the woman that they can't really turn into a freak because... She's too much of a freak to be the woman for them. So they got to get the good girl to turn into the woman that they really want. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I'm not saying for you to just get the average 304 on the block. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Use your common sense. Okay, that's not what I'm telling you to do. But if you come across a really good woman, nice personality, she got stuff going on for herself. But you disagree or you feel off about how sexual she is. But 
every time that y'all y'all had a sexual interaction, every time that y'all got in the bedroom, you felt like you was on top of the world. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Like some men just really can't lay aside their ego to such an extent they will miss out on the good women. And then they marry the good, the good woman that done gone to church, the good woman with the head wraps and, and dressing in Erica Badu clothing. Then you get bored with her within the first three, five years of y'all relationship. Now you over here trying to find the 304. You over here trying, you, I got to get a side chick. When you should have just went with the 304. And that's why I said I made a, a I made a whole collage, you know, a whole thread on my social media that just marry the 304. Turn the hoe into a housewife. There are a lot of women out here that you think are innocent and they aren't. There are a lot of women out here who will play the good girl, but they're really the devious succubus. They will suck you till you bust. There are some women out here who will flip your soul inside out. I would know a Jamaican woman did it to me. <laughs> yes. You you go on social media and you think she all, all nice and, and innocent and, and holy. These women will turn you inside out. And the men love that. But we have been taught to go and you see this even in social media. You see this in music videos. This Madonna complex where we think that because a woman is more sensual publicly, right? Ex you know, directly or outwardly more sexual and sensual than uh, a woman who likes to keep it to herself. Or maybe she doesn't even have like experience or connection with that. You rather go for the woman who isn't as experienced than the woman that's in your fantasy, that's in your dreams. That doesn't make sense. That makes no sense whatsoever, right? But moving on, right? Men just have to get over that, <laughs> that, that ego where they're missing out on the woman that they truly want. Truly. It is what it is. Anyways. But I want to use. Um, getting into this. Talking about Miss Janelle Monet, Right. One of our issues is that we don't want to talk about sex. One of the problems. Like if you truly want to know. One of the problems that we have in this so-called black community. That we have as black people. Is that we do not want to discuss sex with the children we don't want to give them a one-on-one -on -one sex education and you wonder why some of these women end up doing stuff irresponsibly and you wonder why you know daquan and tashan got four to five baby mamas one of the problems that we have as a community right as a community as a people is that we don't want to give the young generation or like the fathers, the mothers and fathers, they don't want to give their kids a one-on-one -on -one about sex. Why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You wonder why. And, and this is something that I also can't fathom. Is like some men will say, I, I don't want to have a daughter. I, I, I'm too scared to have a daughter because I don't know what she's going to be doing behind my back. I don't want a daughter because she might be a 304. She might get ran by the football team. Like, <laughs> is that what you think of women? <laughs> like, really think, like, really ask yourself, why would you think that your daughter would be a pass around? Are you not going to raise her right? Is she not going to have her father in her life? And this is the issue. A woman, like, growing up in high school, right? 
most of the women who were passed around and most of the women who were out here just dogging, being dogged out by any man, didn't have a good relationship with their father. They didn't have a good relationship with their mother. Most of them would be with their grandparents or something like that. But there was some sort of dysfunction. If you just teach your children at an age where they are supposed to understand, like when they enter into middle school, when they reach 12 or 13, give them a sit down about sex. Because if you don't tell them, their friend's going to tell them. If you have a daughter, that boy that she like, that boy that's trying to hit the hit on her, they're going to try and tell her. And anytime that she even exposes or, or uh, shows some form of like, connection with her sexuality you want to shame her i don't know if y'all seen the video that's been going around but this girl uh basically she got caught in her house with two boys right this this girl she got caught in her house uh she got called in the house by two boys and her father i think is african and he decides to record her mind you i do not condone this whatsoever i don't know why you would want to record your children and, and give them public embarrassment where millions of people are going to see this. And this is going to stay up for the rest of the life. For the rest of her life. This is going to be on social media. And she might forever be connected to that video. People might always going to see her and recognize her for the rest of her life. Even when she goes back to school. They're going to see her as that girl. Because her father ruined her life. That connection, that trust that they may have somewhat had. After that video, she ain't never going to trust her father again. She ain't never going to have a good relationship with her father ever again. That's dead. Even, even without the phone, to shame your children for their sexual nature, right? When they starting to get older, they 13, 14, 15, and now they, they start to feel a type of way about people. Now they want to... They have these feelings and emotions. They don't know how to express it. You never taught them what those emotions were and how to deal with them. And when something like this happens, you don't want to have a sit down with them. You don't want to give them a life learning lesson. You just want to beat their ass. They want to shame them and make them feel bad for something that is natural. <laughs> and you shouldn't shame your children as they are getting of age and they are getting older to shame them for a feeling within them that is natural. And this is where dysfunctional promiscuity happens. This is when you're going to have a women out here just getting rolled up by any man or becoming baby mamas to three different men. This is, this is how this happens because the mother and father didn't teach the child the importance and the sacredness of their own sexuality. For an example, right? Boozy Badass. Boozy Badass did a YouTube live stream talking about how his sons and his cousins, he didn't want them to turn rainbow, right? He didn't want them to like the pee pee. So he got some strippers. And some women to suck their pee pee and to have intercourse with them at the age of 12. That was his way of basically introducing them to sex. That was their that was his way of introducing them to sexuality. Mind you, Boozy, he has eight kids with six baby mamas. Boozy Badass has eight kids with six baby mamas. And yet, <laughs> this is how he taught his sons about sex. This is how he introduced it to them. So from, from an early age, now this is how they perceive women. This is how they are going to continue out their life treating women as objects. This is how they're going to continue to live out their life through through this energy concerning sexuality. T.I. I don't know if y'all remember T.I. 
Um, I don't know if it was a tweet or if it was an interview, but T.I., he was getting shunned by a lot of women because he says, like, he sends his daughter to one of those places where they check out, you know, the vagina and stuff like that, just to make sure that, you know, she's still a virgin. And the women were like, well, you don't give this same type of standard to your sons. T.I. has seven kids with three baby mamas. And I do not know whether or not that includes Tiny. But he has seven kids with three baby mamas. The, gy- the, the gynecologist, thank you. Sends his daughter to the gynecologist to get her uh, vagina checked out to make sure that she's still a virgin. But he does not give the same sentiment to his children, to his sons. Mind you, he has seven kids with three baby mamas. So this double standard has to end. (laughs) This double standard has to end with, with all that. But overall, this communication or, or this, this, uh, uncomfortability that we have with sex is ridiculous. It's ridiculous when it concerns Miss Janelle Monae. It's ridiculous when trying to accept women for their sexual nature. If more women, if there are women out there who are just directly and outwardly sexual than another woman or the average woman. It's ridiculous when you don't want to have a sit down and a talk with your children. It's ridiculous if you catch your children watching something they're not supposed to be watching and you make them feel bad for watching it. So now it's not that they're not going to not watch it. It's not that they're going to stop watching it. They're just going to watch it even even closer or th- rather they're going to watch it um, more sneaky. They're going to be more sneaky with it. Instead of giving them a life learning lesson about this. That's the problem. (laughs) And yes, I am putting full blame on black people. The reason why uh, you have more single mothers and and, uh, so it supposedly 70 percent of single parent households or single mothers. I blame black people now. Yeah, we had the feminist movement. Yeah, we had wealth, all, a welfare, mo- all this type of stuff. I blame black people now. I blame niggas. It's no longer the higher ups or people outside of the so-called community who are trying to uh, pull strings. It's it's at your hands now. They don't even have to do any work anymore. It's it's what you're pushing. It's the red pill content. It's the so-called gender war on social media. It's it's the music that you endorse. All this stuff is at your hands now. It's no longer at their hands. So until you become comfortable with sex, until you be comfortable with that wild kundalini energy within yourself, that wild shakti energy, until you can accept women naturally wanting to be succubus until you can accept men dressed as much, you know, that a woman can be dressed as much of a natural succubus and wild as a man, you know, for because for some reason it's natural for a man to be an incubus. It's, it's natural for a man to be a ladies man, right? It's to a point where <laughs> there's a saying of a man be, being a ladies man, having all the ladies that's natural. But when a woman has all the men, now she's looked down upon. Ridiculous. So until you become comfortable with sex, there's always going to be a dysfunction. Until you are able to communicate it, express it properly, however you may see that, and you are able to teach that to the upcoming generation when the time is right. There's always going to be an issue with that. So I don't have an issue with Miss Janelle Monet. I support her. She's doing her thing. Some people say, oh, but she's a part of the, the rainbow. I really don't care. <laughs> That's her. That's what she wants to do with her personal life. That ain't got nothing to do with me. 
you know, she putting out good information and stuff like that. I'm going to utilize the good information. I'm not going to concern myself with what she is individually or outwardly and what she does in her everyday. But if she's putting out good information, if she's tapping into the energy, utilize the information she's putting out, utilize the energy and keep it moving. Nobody's telling you to ride her dick. All right. Nobody's telling you to ride her coattail. Just get the information. Appreciate it. Keep it moving. Anyways, y'all let me know how y'all personally feel about this respectfully in the comments below on Spotify. Answer the poll. Thank you to all the people who listen to me on Instagram, all the type of stuff. And until next time, oh, make sure you like the video, share it, and we out. The waves brought me a song in the night That spoke in the softening light Words of a lonely one Away island, he lets his poems drift on the sea, immersed in the warmth of the current.